as we're migrating now deeper into the capstone planning and, and all this and that, we're also going to start talking about some things like your elevator speech, like your, um, we've already started talking about our, our resumes, but, but um, about professional things as well as your actual research. And so many of you guys might already have, uh, hopefully many of you have already started building a professional network. But I wanted to at least touch on this now in the early part of this semester so that those of you that haven't thought too much about this can actually start thinking about this so you can have some of this groundwork laid before you guys graduate. And so um, I want to talk about how we go about um, building our professional network. So, so who here has a, a network of, of science professionals that they, so Tevin, anybody else? Couple of you guys, and so so Rob, how 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 so how did you go about establishing your network or or the first what were the first toes in the water for establishing a network? Okay, good. So start so got a toehold, just met one person and then started doing some stuff, and then that person introduced you to somebody else, kind of thing. Good, Vanessa, how how did you start your uh, professional network? That's kind of the same thing. Okay. Professor. Okay, cool. Tev, how did you just start your thing? Okay. Right. So a lot of this stuff, uh, you know, a lot of these, the similarity in a lot of these is that, you know, they go through uh, me or, or, or uh, the, the faculty, right? And that's, that's totally cool. Um, but, um, and so you guys should absolutely use us to help jumpstart your network, but you guys also should be working on, you know, how you can do it yourself. So I'll just do a couple quick stories and then we'll show a couple uh, things you can start to think about. So here's some examples of networking. So uh, that first picture is me, uh, just as I've blown out all the blood vessels in my eyes, and my eyes are about to go deep red for about a month. Um, and so that's when I was a volunteer out on Catalina Island, uh, when I was basically in your guys' position. And so from going out to that, in this case, a field station, um, where a lot of other people came through, it was a great chance to start building a network. So all kinds of folks came through there. Other students, uh, gra I was an undergraduate, but other undergraduate students, graduate students, uh, researchers, uh, uh, you know, park service type folks, professional type folks. So it was, a, it was a really neat place. It wasn't, in this case, it wasn't just a science place. It was also a medical facility that dealt with uh, hyperbaric uh, injuries. And so there's all kinds of doctors that came through and all kinds of volunteers. So it was a great place to start uh, meeting folks. Uh, the next picture down there is um, uh, myself at a meeting called the Western Society of Naturalists. And I'm putting that <laughs> sombrero I stole from a, a mariachi band um, on the uh, head of the then president. So this is this was the uh, um, a famous fish, fish biologist from Moss Landing Marine Labs. So meetings are also really key. Uh, another great way to, to go and start to jump start your network and meet people and, and uh, engage people in, in, in not just professional context, but also social context, which can be really useful um, down the road. Um, I clearly had more hair in these pictures. Uh, and then here's another one of my friends who it looks like he has a lot of hair because he's actually bald, just like me. Um, but uh, this, this is the guy that I was, when it, my, I blew up my eyeballs over there, that was the guy I was working for, right? And so when I, I first went to work for him and the first like week or two or whatever it was, I blew out my eyeballs and I couldn't die for 14 days. And he was thinking, geez, what did I do? I hired this idiot kid and can't dive and all this and that. And it turns out we've had a long friendship and all kinds of great partnerships and things like that. So, so in some cases, your network will start and it'll, it'll persist. In other cases, it'll start and it might not lead to anything. And that's cool, right? We don't know how our network is going to evolve, but the key thing is we need to start it. Um, and so here's another example. So this is, uh, these are some friends of mine that some of you guys might recognize. So up on the right is um, uh, a guy in the middle who's also the guy in the, in the pink shirt down here. He's now the, the head of the UCLA herbarium. And then this, this guy, and then this guy, which is the same as that guy, um, 
is, uh, is a professor up at Oregon State. And so um, not only is networking going and meeting people, networking is also networking amongst you guys, right? So this is a picture when we're all graduate students at UCLA at this place called Foos Palace that they used to love. I never really liked Foos Palace, but um, you know, to, be, to be a friend, I would go to Foos Palace. Um, uh, in any event, so we still, we still work together, right? So some of you guys have come with us to Louisiana, um, and these are my friends that uh, I've brought to Louisiana with us and are, are, are key partners in that endeavor. And so you, some of your network is right in the room with you guys, right? And I think sometimes when we're all busy and it's getting to the end of school and we're trying to graduate, we maybe don't think about that, but you should also utilize not just your, not just your me and your professor network to establish contacts. You should, you should you know, talk with folks. So um, one great thing that, that some folks started doing last year was some of our dinners. Are you guys, are you guys doing dinners this year? Not really? Not yeah, not yet. Okay, fine, that's cool. Um, but, but as a suggestion, one thing that's great to do is if you guys could pick a time, right? I'm not gonna give you a grade on this. I don't, I don't care if you do or don't do this, but it really does make a big difference. It honestly does. If you guys once a month or whatever the heck can go and just have lunch together, uh, have dinner together, we're, right? Starting next week, we're, we're having our third Wednesday barbecue, st our, our first iteration of our third Wednesday's barbecues, which are gonna be out here, which is another cool place, but you know, work on your friendships, right? And, and these can be key networking nodes that can um, help you out onto the future. And so just a, a, one quick example of that, from last week, I got invited to be on this uh, uh, statewide panel. That, that screen is not positioned right, but um, uh, statewide panel to uh, help the state understand what they should do with the coast. And um, this is a, scientific advisory team that reports to the state of California. But um, the short, the, the thing I wanted to highlight here was these are, these are the people that were on the, that are on this panel. So a bunch of folks. So probably you guys don't know these guys because you're young. But just to talk about the value of networking, this guy was um, a researcher when I was an undergrad at, at my university when I was an undergrad. And uh, so I helped, I helped him out then and then I went to UCLA just when he went to UCLA and he became essentially a co-advisor to me and now we do lots of collaboration together right so I, I had no idea when I was volunteering for this guy years and years ago that I would still be interacting with him um, this is a person that I went to uh, graduate school with she's uh, the only person really I haven't interacted with in in the last many years um, but, you know, so I know her through that. This is a guy who was a graduate student in the lab that I worked in as an undergrad. So I worked with him and, and have known him forever. Uh, uh, this was this guy, I said I went out to Catalina. So this is a guy that um, was a, prof um, a professor from Cal State Fullerton. So I, he was never my professor. He never, uh, you know, um, I never had a class from him or anything like that. But he was a great guy when I'd have a question about, he was a phycologist, when I have a question about algae, because I, I did my PhD on algae. But even, even when I was an undergrad, before I did my PhD, I was interested in algae. And I didn't have any phycologists I could talk to up at, UC, up at my undergraduate uh, institution. So I would go talk to him, and he would help me out, and it was great. And I thought, oh, I'd never see this guy again. I see him all the time now, um, and on various committees and stuff. Uh, this uh, lady is the only person that I have not worked with formally other than being on a, a committee or two here and there she's a professor up uh, in northern california and then this guy same thing so this guy was also a graduate student when i was an undergraduate and he actually went and got a master's degree in statistics before he went to get his phd doesn't that sound awesome to you guys yes look at you guys sound totally excited so nobody knows statistics right so he's like the statistics guru so to this day, when I have a problem, I can't figure out how to do it. I'll send him an email. Hey, I call Uncle Pete. Hey, Uncle Pete, how do I do this? You know, I don't know how to do this. And um, so, so it's great. So all these folks I'm on this committee with thing now, and it just shows the value, not that I got on this committee because I knew any of them, but, but um, it, it really shows that if you lay the groundwork for these networks, um, they can be really fr fruitful over the course of your career. And one of the ways you guys can start doing it is with your thesis right here, right? 
So when I was young, we didn't call it a capstone. We called it a senior thesis, but it's the same exact thing. Right? So this is my uh, senior thesis. Doesn't it look interesting to you guys? I know, because you're totally excited. I know. Does anybody know what those are? Limpets. OK, excellent. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> so I did my uh, senior thesis basically where the oil spill, where the refugio oil spill happened. And, um, and it was a route, a crowbar, into starting to talk to some people that I otherwise maybe wouldn't have talked to. Right? Ask them questions. Can you help me with this? I don't know about that. And da 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 da, da Right? And, and again, this is, we've talked about this, but this is your first step towards, um, towards becoming a peer, right? Because we're leaving, we're leaving the area where I'm the professor guy and I tell you stuff. Right? And we're getting more into the area where you guys find out some stuff that I have no idea about. Right? And indeed, that, that'll happen across the semester. By the end of the semester, you guys will know more about your specific topics than, than I will, or, or Dr. Rodriguez, or, or Dr. Steele, or whoever. Right? So that's really cool. And so this is, your, this is one of your ways to not just build your knowledge up, but also to start building up your professional network. And so uh, we don't have a whole lot of time left today, but. But um, I want to talk about a few things and, and how these things change around. So uh, the first is, as you guys know, the way we're collaborating is different. So is anybody, who here is working in a group, or, or not a group, but, but, but a collaborative, collaborative thing? Okay, great. And so how are you guys, how are you guys passing information back and forth? Uh, we're kind of like working on the same project, so we're kind of like passing up like, oh, how did this work out for you? Versus Okay, when you pass notes, how do you, do you just have lunch and talk? Do you send emails? How do you guys communicate the information? Just kind of whenever we run into when each other. When you bump into each other? Okay, who else? Uh, so we can like type each other's emails there and you can do like a Google Doc, so that way you can just refer to each other. And if you ever want to, you can type it in. Okay, cool. So are you guys doing that though? You can't? Yeah, they're great. Okay, okay. So, so use some of our electronic tools, our online tools. Collaborative tools. Okay, cool. And then also texting and communication stuff. Who else is doing some? Amy. Weekly meetings. Okay, good. And so you, you guys have set times for your weekly meetings or are you sort of? Okay, good. So yeah, so really helpful. So really helpful is to be, is to, is to set some very rigorous times, right? And um, so we're working on, for example, I'm working on three or four grants right now. Totally don't have time to work on any grants right now, right? I'm, all, I'm, I'm, I'm busy with you guys, right? And, and other things. Um, the only way we're making any vague sense, you know, half of an ounce of a piece of progress is because we have, def, you know, defined times. So one thing that we've done that might be helpful to you guys is not just have a deadline for your talking or your, your, your discussing your stuff. Have a deadline for um, stuff for, for, for data, for, for theses, for the, the, the text, whatever that might be, and also a deadline to talk about it. So for example, maybe you'd want to pick a Wednesday at 5 p.m., maybe, and that's when all of your, let's say you guys are writing a joint description of your project or something like that, right? So maybe Wednesday at 5 is when that's all due, say, in your Google Drive. And then maybe you guys have your talking meeting maybe Friday at lunch or, or something, right? So that way, that way there's, there's a defined time when you have, if you guys do have to share something, share photos, share text, share whatever, or, or, or planning for your trip to the island, whatever it might be, that stuff's there. And then you also have another time uh, when you can actually discuss it. And you had left yourself at least a little bit of time so that you can actually process the information. So that's, that's a... That's one suggestion, right? Everything's going to work for people differently, but that's one thing. What else? What are some other uh, ways people are going about collaborating and, and working with folks? How about this? How are you guys collaborating with your, your advice, people that don't have me as your primary person, people that have addition, outside people? How, what's your main way of you, uh, of you guys collaborating with them, Sean? Email. Okay. Okay. Cool. Email, any any other any other ways you guys are doing stuff? Uh, text and calling. Okay, so so same thing. So email, text, uh, <clears throat> talking to each other verbally over the phone. Cool. Sometimes periodic drop-ins. Yeah, 
Okay, good. So, so I, I think it's just like we said. The, so there's the periodic, and there's the more uh, regimented. You know, every every week or every other week or whenever your your timetable is. So those are all um, key. What I would say is as so. Let's see. Who would say that their main way of collaborating with their with their advisor or or partners or whatever is through email slash text? Okay, so who would say the main way, so that's just about everybody, who would say the main way of collaborating with their partners is through face-to-face? -face? Okay, so a small fraction, or not, maybe not a small fraction, maybe more like, maybe what was that, 30% maybe, something like that, 30%, okay. So both have their value, right? Both have their value. But I would say, um, for you guys building up your network, um, if you can push more of that to face-to-face, -to -face, that would be better. Because in addition to the face to f so so um, so there's value in being able to communicate, especially say if someone's on the island and we're here, awesome, right? There's also value in being able to pop off something at midnight to someone when you're thinking about it, right? So that's valuable too. But um, we need to not underestimate the value of actually face to face communication, right? That's going to work on your your verbal and communication skills as well as your as your thinking and and writing skills um, but also that's what I find that's where a lot of the other things come into play right if you're just sending an email how should I do this how should I test this hypothesis right that's cool but you're gonna get an answer of how you should test that hypothesis right whereas if you're sitting in the person's office you're going to ask about how should I test this hypothesis you'll talk about that but you can also say wow man wasn't that crazy weather today and then you go, yeah, it was crazy weather today. Oh, did you see that story about blah, blah, blah? Yeah, I saw that story. And then pretty soon you guys might be talking about other things. Not that, you know, I know we're all busy and we have tight timelines, but, but it's much easier to have the other, the additional, the, the extra stuff happen when you guys are in these more face-to-face -face type situations as opposed to uh, online. So I, I would just uh, urge you guys to think about that. Um, and then again, the next thing I want to mention is, is this shift that you guys are, are going into, right? So the, the position you've been in this far in school is basically to be the, the apprentice to the master, right? The learner to the scholar. And that, and that is now shifting. And as you guys graduate, move into your, your jobs, your ESRM related jobs, um, well, that still will be there. They'll be the senior person, and then you're going to be the junior person. But that that magnitude of difference between um, these two sort of power positions or or pecking orders or however you want to say it is going to be lessened. And as we go through time, it's going to be um, more or less erased. And so that's that's what you guys need to also understand. So um, for some of you guys, not a problem. Uh, for others of you guys. Um, it is a bit of a change, right? And so sometimes you might say, hey, so how should I do this? So a classic one would be writing. Writing is a classic one. So you're going to submit some stuff, and I'm going to say, oh, no, I would do it like this, 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 and this, right? And, you know, I might well be right. Could, could be right. But um, maybe I'm not, right? Um, there, again, as, as, as we go into this more open universe of you guys collecting data, I might have some ideas about how to analyze your data. And again, I have some experience, so I might be right, probably worth at least trying out what I'm saying, but I'm not necessarily right all the time, right? And, and neither, are, is a doc, neither are Dr. Rodriguez or Steele or, or whoever, right? And so you guys also developing, you don't want to be a jerk about it, right? You know, they're like, screw you, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but um, you might want to say, yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know if that's right. I hear what you're saying. Thanks. Let me try that. But I'm going to go this. I'm going to go down this route. And here's why. So I'll tell you a, a story that happened to me with a person that was not on that list. I just showed. There's no picture of this person. Uh, but uh, this be unnamed person. Uh, but uh, I was finishing up uh, my PhD, and uh, just like you guys, I. I had to write things and re revise, 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 revise. 
And I'd gone up to Stanford to start my postdoc before I finished my PhD, which normally people say, don't do that, don't do that, because it's too easy to get distracted and you never finish your PhD. So anyways, I'm up there. And uh, so I was finishing and I was, I was basically done. And I was sending my chapters down to be read by my committee. So in other words, I was not physically in the room. Like I just was encouraging you guys, the best inter some of the best interactions are when you're in the room, you can read the body language and, and all this and that. So I was not there, I was, I was half a state away. So I sent down one of my chapters, to, well I sent down my chapters to all my committee and they read them and, and just like I will or your advisors will, they'll comment on them, right? Give me feedback. And this, this one uh, of my committee members, um, and to be clear, your committee members have to sign off on your PhD or you don't, you don't graduate, right? And so, um, so it's not just a pro forma thing, they really have to do it. And, and for example, up at, up at Stanford, there's several people that famously, if they didn't like what you were right, they just, pfft, nope. So several people I knew never gra got their PhD and left school because they, they couldn't deal with this, this one particular jerky person. Um, so anyway, so, so I sent my things down and, and I get this stuff back and this person makes these comments that are just stupid. I mean, really stupid. So I have a graph and the error bars are really large. And this person says things like, oh, you, obviously there's something wrong with your data. You couldn't possibly have this thing turn out the way it turned out. And I looked at it and went, oh my God, I'm so stupid. How could that possibly be? And I go back and I look at my stuff and I go, no, 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 that's right. And then I look at some of their arguments and I said, and I went to Excel in about one minute and made some fake, and made, made some fake data just like you guys did this week. And, and ran, ran some quick statistics and showed that this condition this person said could never happen, pfft, I just made it happen right there, right? It was very easy to make it happen, right? And so, um, so um, I responded in not the correct way. <laughs> so I responded in a very detailed manner with why every single one of these, this person's statements were wrong. And I cited the statistical text as to why this person had no idea about how to do, say, calculating error bars, you know, things like that. And, and wrote all this kind of stuff and wrote it down. And I was not trying to be insulting. I was thinking, oh, I'm physically away and we can't have this discussion, right? Or it's, it's very hard to have this discussion. So I'm going to just outline, ex I'm going to reject all this person's comments. <laughs> And then tell them why they were stupid. But, you know, but, you know, in other words, tell them why that was, those suggestions were not helpful. And I didn't hear from the person for like a week. And I didn't hear from the person for two weeks and three weeks and four weeks and five weeks and six weeks. And I'm starting to think, what, what, is, what is up, right? And so I call my major professor to ask, hey, you know, have you gotten any feedback from, from Professor X? And the person says, no, I haven't. And then, and, you know, so it's going on for a long time. So finally, after about two months, uh, you get a phone call from my uh, major professor. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Professor X is going to sign off on, on, your, uh, on your stuff. But um, they were very, very upset with you. And they came down to my office and they, they talked to me. And they said they've never been so insulted by a student ever in their life. And they didn't know how to handle this. And, it did, it did, it did, it and I was attacking this person's intellect and all this and that. And uh, that had not, I had, it had not even occurred to me that person would take it that way, right? I thought that we were behaving more like peers and this person, this person didn't want to be talked to that way, right? And so, so that was my error. So the person finally signed off on my my PhD, thank God, but, but, um, but to this day, when I run into this person occasionally, don't see this person a lot, kind of try to avoid this person, but, but, um, but when I encounter this person, you know, every other year or so at a, at a conference, at a meeting, uh, like the last time this person introduced me as the most problematic graduate student this person has ever had, and uh, to, her, to this person's new graduate students, you know, like, they'll say that, and it's like, ah, oh, hey, thanks. Um, so, so the point there is, uh, had we been able to be face to face, we could have avoided a lot of that silliness. Or I could have said maybe similar things, and then maybe gone over to the person's computer and like tick tick tock tock tock, and showed, see, this is why you're, you know, misunderstanding basic statistics, right? Um, and so, 
So anyway, be that as it may, uh, the peers versus going from the ap apprentice to the peer level is not necessarily easy, and I understand that. But you guys are, are, need to be much more concerted about as you guys make your, your moves that way. Um, any other things? Have you guys had any problems as you, or, or, or what are some of the stresses you guys have had as, you've, as you're kind of moving into this, or maybe some of your other projects or other things as, as you're, you're trying to talk with some intimidating person like me or some other, some other boss type person? Have you guys had any, anything in particular that sticks in your mind? Uh -huh. I want to do something that actually matters. Mm -hmm. I want to do something that's just like for the hell of it, you know? So I guess that kind of stunted me for the first couple of weeks where I was just like, I want to do something that actually matters. Right. So you, don't want to, you don't want to look stupid. You don't want to be something right. that's not helpful. Uh, right. I don't want to just do something just because, just you know? Right. So. Right. But, I, you know, now I feel better about it. So. Right. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, so, uh, so for example, uh, another graduate student, uh, another graduate student story. Um, when I went to graduate school, I, I started late. I was in Antarctica for the start of the academic year, so I came back late. And um, I didn't know anybody there. And um, uh, I, there was a key issue. There was some problem with, with, my, with a, uh, getting into my room, and I couldn't get into my room. So I went across the way, and I started talking. So I was this sort of old, kind of grumpy British guy. <laughs> and I was like, hey, yeah, how's it going? Hey, I'm, I introduced myself. And, and he introduced himself. And clearly, he's a professor. I said, okay, great. And I was like, hey, could you mind helping me with this? Kid? So, you know, we just started talking. And um, uh, this was a gentleman that, was, that liked to be intimidating, liked to talk very slowly. And if you said, hey, do you think you should do a poster or a thesis? He would just look at you. He had a pipe. Just smoke his pipe and just look at you. And then, and you kind of start to feel stupid. I mean, ha, ha. I mean, well, yeah, clearly I should have done a poster, right? And then you just smoke some more pipe. And then you're like, okay, sorry. I didn't mean to bug you. And then, like, yeah, I mean, one of these guys. So much so that one of my friends, I remember before one seminar one time, uh, she was throwing up outside. She was so nervous that she had to give a presentation for this guy because he was so – he – he wasn't, I know, I think a lot of you guys think I'm intimidating. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, but, uh, but this guy really liked to be intimidating and liked to cultivate that notion, right? And he's very, very old school guy. So he's a brilliant guy, very, very smart uh, gentleman. But um, I was an idiot. So I blundered in the first day, like, blah, 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 blah. And he's a super famous guy, and, you know, da, 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 da. And I'm like, blah, 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 blah. right? And I've done that many times in my career. And so, uh, and so I totally hear what you guys are saying. That you want to be smart, right? You want to be helpful. You want to be, you, you want to walk in and look like I normally look, right? Um, but, and so, yeah. So as much as possible, be prepared. Have some stuff to say. But don't let that stop you from saying anything to these folks, right? You need to start somewhere. And, of course, we'd all like to start off on a, on a, on a positive footing, but don't let, don't let that um, worry or concern stop you from interacting with folks. Okay, good. What else? What are some other interactions you guys have had as, you, as, you're, as you're moving up more into this peer-type peer situation? People are on islands where there's not... Right. Right. So my son just broke or, or just recently broke his wrist. And, you know, we go see the doctor. And then, do you have any questions? Uh, nope. You sure? No questions for the doctor? Yeah. Nope. And they were walking in the car. Ah, oh, I really wonder if other than like, what, dude, what you just said? There was a, well, I just forgot, right? So, so you know, before we went to the doctor this last week, it's like, so, uh, do you have any questions with the doctor? Nope, don't have any questions. With the, really? Yeah, don't have any questions with the doctor. You don't have any questions? Like, nope, no questions with the doctor. You sure? Nope. Like, Why don't you make up one or two questions? You don't have to ask them if you don't want. Why don't you just make some up ahead of time? And then he ended up asking those questions, right? So, so yeah, as much as you guys could have a, a, a couple, like a crib sheet or whatever, right? If you look, and this is not for you guys, novice people, watch, uh, you know, Stephen Colbert, watch whatever, Jimmy Fallon, when they're interviewing people, they, they're not all brilliant every single minute of the day, right? They have cue cards, right? And, I mean, a lot, the, the most brilliant folks will only use those occasionally, but everybody has those. Um, so it's not a problem for you guys to bring some, some prompts, bring some questions, think about it, you know, f a little bit before you go into the meeting. That's a great, that's a great idea. Kevin? I was just going to say, like, uh, I just helped California Fish and Wildlife when I worked at Wish Foundation. Sure. 
Right. Good. Yeah. So 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 no. So and th- th- that so that's a good one. But that's a that's a sort of more sophisticated level. So that's knowing that uh, person A doesn't like person B, or or entity A doesn't work well with entity B. You should never lie and say that you don't work for entity B, but you maybe want to downplay that, right, or not highlight that. So absolutely, and, and that yes, yeah, so that's a much more sophisticated sense. I wouldn't expect that you guys you're just starting to build your network to be to be worried about that. But but, but that's a good point. Other thoughts, other things. Uh, people are getting ready to migrate. Um, uh, why don't we just hit these guys really quick, and then we'll we'll break for um, break for this week. Two suggestions for you guys to start building your your um, n- network. One is LinkedIn. You do not have to join LinkedIn if you don't want, but I, I think it might be a useful thing. Um, we'll talk about next time or whatever, I guess, about um, how LinkedIn is much more valuable for employers and people looking to hire you. It's, it, it, some people think it's like Facebook, but it really is different, right? It's about professional communication. It's about professional contacts. It's about having your resume in there. And um, well, no one has to do this if you guys are on LinkedIn or do join LinkedIn, it's free. Um, please do at, uh, go to the group ESRM Jobs and, and request access. So that's where I post, again, all of our announcements about internships, jobs, that kind of stuff. And it's only available to you guys and our alumni. So it's not, it's not just anybody can't just get into it. So um, do consider uh, joining LinkedIn. We'll, we'll talk about how you guys can work on your profile to make yourself um, uh, look better for possible jobs and things like that, but but at least uh, maybe start with joining. And then another one that just we've just started, to, I've just started to use this last uh, few months. Um, that would be this thing called ResearchGate. Now you guys are all eligible to join. If you're not a researcher, you can't join. You guys are all doing your own research, and it can be. Um, I mean, it's, it's still a bit of an unproven thing but it's grown tremendously. So there's something like 7 million users of this now. Um, it's not as even as our other more sophisticated social networks, but most of the users are in the UK, the US, and then a few other countries. Um, but uh, it's, it's still useful. Here, this is much more of a professional CV type of thing where you can put in your training and, and all this and that. You can also upload papers. So in your guys' case, maybe you, you don't have to upload full papers if you don't want. You can upload white papers or drafts or whatever. So you guys could absolutely upload your, um, uh, once we get it tweaked a little bit, you guys can upload your um, capstone proposal, for example. If you guys want to give a talk on something, you can upload the, the talk and title of your, you know, the title and abstract of your talk, that kind of stuff. And then more importantly, you guys can start to follow people. You can look for publications, you can find publications, but you can also start to follow things. There's discussion groups and stuff like that. But um, particularly for those of you that are interested in more academic type research, this is seeming like it might be a, a, useful, a useful tool. So, uh, so I would encourage you guys to, it's free to sign up, um, to, to sign up and um, uh, we can talk more about that later. But yeah. Um, and I'll just, I'll just mention this and then we'll, we'll close out here. So this is uh, something from LinkedIn that you can no longer do. So my maps only go up to about a year and a half ago. But I think it's instructive that when we talk about networking to talk about this. So this is a feature called um, uh, InMaps that LinkedIn and all these, all these, all these you know, Web 2.0 places, they, they start all this great stuff. And then they realize your people are making money off it or whatever. And like, no, we're gonna turn that off. So this has been turned off. You can't do this anymore. You can do something sort of similar, but it tops off at the first 500 connections. And so for what I'm trying to show you, it doesn't work. So there's no way to really do this easily for me now. Okay. Uh, so this is my LinkedIn network when I only had 386 connections. And the, the thing I want you guys to note is the color corresponds to people with similar backgrounds. So I'm at the center because that's how they generate these maps. And then this is, this is so the um, uh, thickness of the dot is how many other connections this person has, right? So the thicker the dot, the more connected they are. And then the lines show that this person is connected to this, this person is connected to this person, et cetera, right? So this is when I had 386 connections. Here's where I have 450. 
Here's where I have 638. So now we're starting to see some other. So, so we had a lobe here, a lobe here, a lobe here, then some kind of random -y stuff over here. Now we have a lobe, a lobe, a lobe. This thing is getting a little more distinct. A lobe here. Uh, again, more. Now this is 638. More, more stuff going on. Um, again, boom, 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 boom. Now it's 774. Um, any thoughts about what some of these groups might be? Or uh, so this one looks really different, right? Any thought what this one might be? I know it's it's a tough guy. Right, right. This is CSUCI. So these are the professors you're going to go like me. You're going to start talking to me, right? Oh, except I'm a little different. I'm more connected, but 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 um, right. And so here, so, okay, here's 957, here's 1,248, here's 2,000, here's 2,334. So here we go. So green is coastal and marine professionals that are outside California. Blue is coastal marine inside California. These guys are terrestrial people outside of California. This is California government, this goldenrod thing. These are fisheries. And then again, this is CSUCI. So the thing I want to say as you guys uh, take off and head to your next class is um, a lot of our, uh, so a lot of the people that might, this guy might be interested in giving you a job or whatever, this person's well connected with, with this community. Um, in some communities, there's a lot of overlap. Check out how much overlap there is with these guys. But here's CSUCI. Not much a lot of disconnected, right? So th that's a fine place to start. But you know, start your network there, but realize you're, pro you're gonna have to grow beyond your CI network, right? Unless you're connected to me, because I'm, I'm obnoxious and connected to too many people. But, but, the, but realize that, right? So, so you guys should be building your network every way you can. Don't just utilize your nearby neighborhood. Start there and expand up, and I'll, uh, we'll talk more about this next time. Thanks, you guys. Um.